Welcome to today's share about time. I've gone back and forth as to whether I want to make this a free analytic daily share or to do a, a, a give it more time. And the more I've gone back and forth on, I'm going to give it more time. But I'm going to reference some other quick guides I have to my uh, free analytic daily share where I show some really quick shortcuts to doing some of the very things I'm doing here. This one, I'm going to go down to the nuts and bolts of using uh, Splunk built-in functions to convert time. But I've got much quicker, faster ways, and I'll demonstrate it as we go through the video, that when it makes it work, you don't have to spend your time dealing with uh, uh, some of these time conversions. There's easier ways. Uh, so let's just get right to it. Real simple, if you're not familiar with this command, make results. It is a wonderful command. It allows me to use whatever uh, data I have, and I'll just make it. So I'm going to go, I'm going to put some time equals now. This will actually say, hey, uh, I don't have any data I'm looking for in the index, but you know what? Just give me these fields back. And it's going to make a field called sometime. And it's going to use this built-in function now, which will return the time. Now, Splunk uses epoch time, which is the number of seconds that have passed since a year. I think it's 1970, 1960. I always get it mixed up. But sometime many years back. And if I write table, now I'll put a time. And I'm going to put a sum time field here. Time is going to be the time that this query ran. That's just the natural time. That's how Splunk works. Anytime you got data coming back, it's going to tag it with this underscore time. And then you're going to get sum time, which is an epoch time. To be fair, if I were to go throw this into an epoch time converter, these two values would be pretty much equal to each other. This is the epoch time, number of seconds. And this is the human readable time form. Uh, something that's really kind of cool this leads into letting you understand um, what I what I why what I'm about to show you. A lot of the time you can get around doing it. I'm going to put eval actually not here. Yeah, that'll work. Eval uh, chain epoch. Let's just make it foo equals. So we're going to go equals um, sometime. If I put foo here, it's going to just repeat itself. We have the exact same value. But instead, now I'm going to go and do something like this. I could I could have done a lot of different ways, but we're going to say that um, I'm going to make the time field go away. Actually, this won't be nearly as obvious to you. Um, if I do this, we've got some time and foo. I can actually convert eval foo equals, sorry, underscore time equals foo. What I'm going to do is, I told you Splunk will take the time this thing ran. I could do some math so you could see that it's going to change. But the principle here, so let's do that, yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll come back to this. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to overwrite this underscore time with the value of the epoch time. So what do you think is going to show up? What if I put time back in here? Am I going to get an epoch time? Or the last time I did it, when it was using Splunk, it was giving me a nice human readable. Well, let's find out. Oh, it's back to a nice human readable. Okay, well, is it using this time or is it using this uh, epoch time? Well, there's an easy way to find that out. We're going to go and we're going to make um, foo. Foo equals foo minus, let's make it minus 1,000. So I'm going to take a thousand seconds off of this, and we're not going to show time at the moment. We're just going to show um, that what's going to come out of here. You're going to see this ends in six two three nine. This ends in five two three nine. So I subtracted some time. Now what is time going to be? If we look at my clock, it's twenty eight two thousand uh, May twenty eighth twenty ten. Run that. Nineteen fifty four. Definitely not the same time. Now, and if you think that's just so you, we can take this field out, now it matches my clock. Now it doesn't because it is taking this time and automatically converting it to human readable time. That is what underscore time is. Underscore time has actually got a built-in function that even though it can handle epoch time, it will convert it back to human readable when you display it. Um, let's show this a different way. Let's now do make another variable eval sum value equals underscore time. And now I'm going to put some value here. Now the question is, will some value come back as this time 
or as epoch time. Some value is back in epoch time. So if you want human readable displayable text, you can just flat out make assign that value to underscore time. If the underscore time field is okay to mess with, assign the value to underscore time and then display it. Make manipulations to it, change, do plus minus hours on it, seconds. It makes things really, really easy. Uh, you can just assign it to time and get it back to human readable. You don't have to do anything about what we're about to show. All right, that being said, what happens when you can't just assign it to the underscore time field? Well, first, we're going to go to the Splunk Quick Reference Guide. If you just Google Splunk Quick Reference, uh, there is a nice uh, little PDF that talks about all sorts of st stuff on Splunk. If I go to page four, what I want to look at is these two commands, strift time and strip time. I don't know how you pronounce that, but anyway, strift time it's going to return an epoch time. It's going to return a really large number. And strip time is going to give you a string that represents time. But you'll notice, it would have been nice if they'd used a, a time fill, the same string here. The values going into the parentheses are the same. But this, when, if, when it's all said and done, if it works right, will return back an epoch time, a number of seconds. This will return back a string. So for the first part of this tutorial, we're just going to use the strip time because we want to I mean uh, the uh, strip time because we want to return. Switch that around. We want to return. We want to do the epoch time. We want to get the epoch time so that you can manipulate it. You can't take a date that says 12. I can't take this May 28, 2013, and just subtract 60 seconds from it. it doesn't work that way. You have to turn it to epoch time. Do the uh, time manipulation, then put it back. And so we're going to talk about converting things to epoch time first. And so I've got this with a bunch of comments in here, and we're going to uncomment stuff as we go through. But uh, and you can so I can hopefully reinforce how this uh, strip time works. But the first thing we do, we know we want to use the strip time. It's going to use this kind of format. Now we just have to figure out what goes in the box. Well, first thing I did is I did a make results, and I did a eval human readable time, just some field, and I put in a time field. 5281946.09. Now, um, for me to make this work, I had to I had to go look through the time, and I saw that it's a, if I want it to display, I need to I need to break this apart. And so the first thing in there in this string is a year that's four digits. Then there's the month. Then there's the day. Then there's the hour. And the, I noticed that it's 19. So it's if it was it's a 24 hour clock. Uh, then the minutes, and then the seconds. And so I know that these are the fields I need. So I need, um, first thing I've done, I did this before, I put in here um, strip time, and I used the exact same thing they did, this H and M. Guess what? It didn't work. It gave me back a blank value there. Doesn't do anything. Well, let's go to our handy-dandy guide here and go to the very bottom. And here we see common date and time formatting. And we can see, all right, if you're manipulating the time section, that's your hours, minutes, and uh, hours, minutes, seconds, time zones, et cetera. You'll mess with these. If you're working on the days, you, work, you, you would use one of these values, months, years. And so we know, if we go back to our example, we're looking for a year that's a four-digit year. So we're here in years. If we use percent lowercase y, it's a year without the century, so 00, zero to 99. So um, whereas if you use a percent capital Y, that'll tell you that it's a four digit. And so we know we want to use a capital Y. And so that's what we put in here, percent Y. And we know we want a dash there. This dash is not part of any magic conversion thing. It's just saying, hey, after I find a four digit year, you're going to find a dash sign in there. Okay, yep, because there's a dash. What's the very next thing? This 05. That's the month. So let's go look at the month. We go look at months. We can use a B, which is an abbreviated month. We definitely don't have Jan, February, March, etc. We don't have the month name, but we do have the month number 01 to 12. All right, so that's a percent M, lowercase m. And so there I wrote that in. The next one is the date. We can put a dash, so I have my dash there, and then we need a date. If we look at the days, we can use percent lowercase d, that's the day of the month, leading zeros, so 0, 01 to 31, or day of the year, weekday, abbreviated weekday, none of those are, but percent d, lowercase d, that's what we want. 
so I put it in. And now there's a space, so I put a space in mine. And then we have hours, minutes, hours, minutes, seconds. So let's go look. If we look here, 24 hours. If it's just using, it, so that would be uppercase H. If it was on a 12 hour clock, you would use percent I. If it was minutes, seconds, etc. So what we go, there's our hours, so I want a capital H. And there's my capital H. Then we want minutes. That's your minute, zero, zero to 59. Yep. And I'll just skip it. There's my second. So it's percent M, percent S. And that, if we run it, we're going to get a test time, two. So we'll get a time, the human readable, and the test time. If I run this query, there we go. This has now been converted to epoch time. Let's play around with some of these. Um, if I did, we had a test time. We're going to take this off. And this field here, this test time two. And if I go put in this test time that is equal to now, I'm just following the example that they put up here. Just remember, don't follow the example to a T. Their example is you strip time, strip time, and then they give an example of hours and minutes. That's great if your time is hours and minutes. My time is not going to be hours and minutes. And so this is not going to work. So let we make sure we have test time two in there. comment this out we don't need this here so I'm not I'm going to use a different test time just so we see it and when it doesn't work you get back a nice old blank there's also other problems with this I mentioned earlier I wanted to show you that the underscore time is a special field be careful how you play with that because okay we'll comment out this one here. Okay, so we have time. Time is a natural field occurring. And so I'm going to put in here underscore time. And it's in this format year, month, date, space, hour, minute, seconds. I don't see anything messed up. We've got our hyphens in there, we've got our colons in there. So this time and this time should be identical when we're done. Press enter. It comes back blank. That's because epoch time is actually, I mean time underscore time is actually an epoch time. And so it's not actually human readable. It's a function that makes underscore time display correctly. So if you try to do strip time and strip time and all these things we're talking about, on the underscore time field, you're going to have problems. Now, I can fix this by doing, um, I'm going to comment out human readable here. And we're going to go eval human readable equals underscore time. I don't need this. This isn't doing anything. Comment that out. Okay. Now test time two is equal to human readable. Now I'm bypassing that. Remember, underscore time is a function as well as a field. So if I go human readable, now I'm not using that function. I've assigned the value of time to human readable. So we'll get a human readable field here, which will change. Uh, human readable right now is a nice readable format. When we're done, this is going to turn to an epoch time because time is epoch underscore time is epoch and the test time will turn into a nice human readable because we're going to take that epoch time actually this is going to fail too because strip time handles human readable and does not so i this is a good time to use so we're going to let it fail because well, as we show it human readable time equals underscore time oh Sorry here, we need to get um, 
underscore eval. Okay, so if I do that, why is my human readable not working? I lost it somewhere. Oh, that's because I messed up here. Human readable. Okay, and I'm pretty sure I don't need to do this either. Sorry, this one here. This shouldn't is not necessary. This should still work. Yep. So because time just naturally exists when you run the query. Uh, so human readable became epoch time. That's what he, underscore time really is, is an epoch time. Just the function makes it display nicely. We then try to put it through strip time. And while this is nice and dandy, this is not. There are no hours, minutes, days there, so it fails. But what's the opposite of strip time? We can now go to strip time. And that returns ep um So if I switch it, strif, it now flips strif time, takes a epoch time, and converts it to a year, month, date, hour, minute, second time. And that works. So you just have to remember what you're doing. Am I taking an epoch time and going to a human readable? then I want to use strip time. If I'm taking a human readable time and wanting to turn it to epoch time, it's strip time. And so we'll show both those examples, but we, we've been doing the strip time. Now I actually have a hunch, I haven't tried this, that if I go put human readable, I put human readable is time. I bet if I go just straight out and skip turning it to human readable and just go straight to time, this should work. And it does. Because underscore time, its actual origin is epoch time. It looks human readable, but it's not. Just remember, it's a nice little function that's converting it for you, which is a massive time saver. If you can use this underscore time to display things, set all of your epoch times to underscore time, and they'll display correctly. They'll display a nice human format. You don't have to figure this out. Um, I hope this is helpful. Just remember, uh, strip time gets you your uh, human, nice human readable. Strip time goes to epoch time. Just know what you're converting. Make sure you have the right one. The formatting, this little part here is all the same. And it just is, you can try, you can memorize this. I mean, these are, a, it's a Linux standard here. I don't know I, if I've used in bash commands and stuff like that. But the easiest way for you to remember it is to go to the Splunk Quick Reference Guide. Page six has your little, uh, what each of the characters means. And page four shows you the command for strip time, strip time, et cetera, right there. So anyway, I hope that helps. If um, hope this helps you move from being a Splunk Ninja, uh, helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. You think I'd get that right after saying it so many times? Um, hope this is helpful on understanding how strip time works. Strip time works. I'm going to put down below my link to my uh, uh, daily, my free analytic daily share that I put out, and it discusses again how to use uh, some quick. Uh, quick time savers on doing some time conversion, primarily using that underscore time field. Anyway, hope this helps. If you liked it, please subscribe. Um, put comments down below on things you'd like to see in videos. This whole video section was because of a comment from uh, a viewer. I, I like to uh, uh, make videos based off what you guys want to see. Anyway, hope you keep coming back for more videos.